There are multiple factors at play to make this a bad episode, but one of the main ones is that so much of the story is driven by whether or not Captain Archer's dog, Porthos, is going to die, and there's no suspense there. As if they would kill off the only sympathetic character. This is a review of the Star Trek Enterprise episode, A Night in Sick Bay. If you have not seen this episode and you don't want to know why Captain Archer is suddenly so grumpy and horny, be warned, spoilers beyond this point. Star Trek Enterprise provides us with so many candidates for its worst episode. Ask 10 different fans, you're likely to get 10 different answers. The top three, or bottom three, I guess, seem to be this one, Dear Doctor, and these are the voyages. I didn't conduct any sort of scientific survey, that's just my subjective impression, which is fortunately all I need because this is my goddamn show. I'm saving both Dear Doctor and These Are the Voyages for later, which leaves this one, but is it really that bad? Let's see. Hoshi, T'Pol, and Archer are in the decontamination bay following an away mission that, from the sound of it, did not go well. Apparently, Enterprise's engine needs a replacement part, and these aliens who manufacture the part, the Cretassins, are being dicks about it. After spending 12 hours on the planet waiting, Archer and his landing party were asked to leave without explanation, and so here they are, slathering each other with decon gel and holding their- Hey! Why is the dog in the sexy naked decontamination chamber? No, 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 that is messed up. I draw the line at bestiality. It's never okay for a human to have sex with a dog. Kissing a dog on the mouth is as far as it should ever go. Dr. Flox clears Hoshi to Paul and Archer, but requires that Porthos, who accompanied the away team to the planet, remain. It seems he picked up some kind of pathogen on the planet's surface, and the typical decontamination procedure didn't get rid of it. Archer checks back a little later, after a brief conversation with Trip, where they reiterate how important it is that they get that replacement part, a plasma injector, and finds Porthos in sickbay in a glass box. He says to Phlox, if you're planning on trying to impress me by levitating him inside that box, don't bother. I know how it's done. The wires slide in underneath the lid. Phlox is like, no, actually that bug he picked up on the planet is destroying his immune system, so I'm isolating him while I run some tests. I sent his genome to the Cretassins along with those of the rest of the landing party before you beamed down, so they should have warned you that there was a threat to Porthos, but I guess maybe they just didn't give a shit. T'Pol finds out why the Cretassins got pissed and threw the landing party off their planet. Apparently, while he was down there, Porthos lifted a leg on one of their sacred trees. Archer's like, that's it? Well, their shitty alien air got Porthos sick, so I guess that makes us even. They better hope Porthos pulls through, too, or I'm gonna go down there and piss on their precious holy trees myself. That seems like petty retaliation for the death of a beloved pet. Hmm. You're right. I'll nuke their capital city from orbit. Archer has trouble sleeping, so he decides to bunk in sickbay to keep Porthos company. Assorted hijinks ensue, Phlox noisily cutting his toenails and noisily feeding his menagerie of animals keeps Archer awake. Archer goes to the gym, where he finds T'Pol running on a treadmill. Archer takes the next treadmill over, and they argue about whether or not he should just apologize to the Cretassins to get the plasma injector while trying to one-up each other by increasing the speed of their treadmills until T'Pol finally just gives up and leaves. Archer goes back to sickbay, gets a little bit of sleep, is woken up by alarms, finds Phlox treating Porthos, who has gone into shock, but then Phlox stabilizes Porthos, and once the emergency is passed, Phlox turns to Archer like, so how long have you wanted to inject T'Pol with your plasma? What? You seem preoccupied with T'Pol's opinion of this situation with the Cretassins. I, a trained psychiatrist, as well as a general practitioner, surgeon, and veterinarian, suspect it may be because you haven't gotten laid for a while and the semen has backed up all the way to your brain. Archer's not buying that, so he tries again to get some sleep. This time, he's woken up by the sound of flocks chasing a bat around. This bat is apparently always escaping from her cage. What a character, that bat! Anyway, Archer helps Phlox try to catch the bat, and that goes on for about a week and a half until Hoshi walks in and calmly catches the bat as it's flying right at her. She tells Archer that the Cretassins are waiting for a response on the terms for his apology that they transmitted a few hours ago. Archer says, make a fart sound. Make a... For my response. Call the Cretassins back and say, Captain Archer responds to your apology terms with the following, and then make a fart sound and hang up. 
Okay. Thanks. Archer goes back to sleep, and this time he has a dream, a sexy dream, where his dog is dead, and it's the funeral, and he holds hands with T'Pol. Flirting with someone at a graveside service really makes you feel alive like few things can, doesn't it? Then, the dream changes to Archer and T'Pol in the sexy black light decon chamber, and T'Pol is naked, and they start making out. Archer wakes up, gets out of bed, and tells Phlox, I had a dream that Porthos died that included no sexual elements involving T'Pol whatsoever. Phlox is like, hey, that's neat, your dog's still dying, by the way. T'Pol enters with some food for Archer and Phlox. Well, that was thoughtful. T'Pol asks Archer about apologizing to the Cretacens, and he's like, I don't know. I can't really think about that now. It's late. I haven't slept. I'm worried about my dog. I'm just doing the best I can. Best. The best I can. Sorry. Tit's been a long night. It's been a schlong night. A schlong tight. It's been my schlong in your tight. What I'm trying to say is, you're fine. Thanks for asking. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I don't know about the apology yet. I'll finger you out later. Figure it out later. Thanks for climbing on top of me. Staying on top of things. Just the whole situation. Good work. That'll be all, come commander. After T'Pol leaves, Flock says, Okay, so my latest treatment is working. The only thing is, it fried Porthos's pituitary gland, so I'm gonna have to swap it out for the gland from this space chameleon in my menagerie. But first, fill this tank up with water, because in order for the operation to work, I'm gonna have to drown the dog. So Archer and Phlox dress up like Nazi doctors, and they drown Porthos, and the doctor drills a hole in his head and replaces his pituitary gland. During the operation, they make small talk about relationships and family, and when it's over, Archer apologizes to Phlox for being a dick to him all night. Then, Archer goes down to the planet and does the song and dance asked of him to apologize to these Cretacean weirdos, which involves cutting down a tree while shirtless and shaving slices off of the trunk and presenting them to the assembled Cretaceans in a very particular way while reciting some made-up alien gobbledygook. That seems to work, though. So the Cretacens accept the apology and give Enterprise not one, not two, but three new plasma injectors. See what happens when you apologize, Jonathan? I hope you've learned a valuable lesson here, middle-aged man. Back aboard Enterprise, there's a brief scene between Archer and T'Pol where he's like, isn't it great that there's no sexual tension between us whatsoever? And she's like, yep. And then... Finally, Archer returns to sickbay where Porthos is all recovered and ready to go home. Yay! The dog lived and everybody's happy, especially me, because this is the end of the episode. Circling back to the question I asked before the snarky plot summary, is this episode really that bad? No. Which is not to say it's a good episode, it's not, it's a lousy episode, but worst episode of the series? One of the worst episodes of the franchise? Not even close. In fact, as I was looking over some of the most common complaints people have about this episode, one of the big ones sounds like it comes from people who have never had a pet, which would be a them problem, not a problem with the episode. What am I talking about? So many people who don't like this episode talk about how Archer behaves in it. He's too proud. He's too stubborn. Why doesn't he just apologize? Yes, he didn't mean to offend them. Yes, these people are oversensitive, pompous assholes, but he was a visitor to their planet. He did decide to bring his dog along. They do have something he needs, so shit, man, just suck it up and say you're sorry. And I get that. It makes sense. But just because a character doesn't behave the way they should in a given situation doesn't make it bad writing. It's only bad writing, for me anyway, if the character is behaving in a way that is unjustified by the situation in the story. Reason, logic, what they should do doesn't enter into it. What they would do is what matters. And while Archer's prolonged tantrum and refusal to apologize to the Cretacens does get stretched pretty thin in this episode, it's rooted in what I think is a realistic and understandable emotional place. The dude is worried about his dog. Why is Archer acting like this? Why is he so short-tempered? Why is he so grumpy? Why can't he see that he's in the wrong because he brought this situation on himself? Because he thinks his dog is going to die. You ever have a dog? Or a cat? Or any kind of pet? Did you love it? 
when it was sick or hurt or acting different than usual? Were you worried? Were you perhaps preoccupied, unable to focus on other things, less patient with other people, quicker to anger? That's because you're a human being with emotions, not a robot. Archer's not a robot either, so why should we expect him to be written like one? I'm not saying Archer comes across good in this episode, but the problem is in the execution, not the concept. The concept, protagonist jeopardizes an important mission because he's worried about his dog, is solid. I've only had one dog in my life, and one cat, and I loved them both so much, and I miss them both so much, and I completely get where Archer is coming from in this episode. Oh, I brought my dog over to your place, and he got a life-threatening illness, and you expect me to apologize because he took a leak on your favorite tree? Here's my counteroffer. If my dog lives, we call it even. If my dog dies, I come back and set fire to your house with you in it. Don't worry, though. I'll make sure no harm comes to your tree, you motherfucker. My problem with the episode isn't Archer's behavior, but that an hour centered on Archer behaving unreasonably because he's worried about his dog, where not much else happens, is hard to sustain. The outcome never really feels in doubt. Porthos is going to be okay. Archer is going to realize that he's treated people unfairly and swallow his pride and say he's sorry. And the road to that outcome is long and tedious and padded out with some very questionable character choices. While there has been the slight suggestion of attraction between Archer and T'Pol prior to this, it's never been a significant component of their relationship. They start out antagonistic toward each other, then comes respect, then ultimately trust and friendship. But sexual tension? romantic longing? Maybe a little tiny bit here and there, but not really. So when Phlox suggests that part of Archer's bad mood is due to his attraction to T'Pol, it comes out of left field, and it plays like what I suspect it is, an attempt by the writers, Rick Berman and Brandon Braga, to give Archer and Phlox something besides Porthos and the Cretacens to talk about to eat up time in the episode. Oh yeah, and since it's Berman and Braga, an excuse to see Jolene Blaylock briefly kinda sorta naked. That need to kill time is also why we get that endless and pointless bat chasing scene with its failed attempts at slapstick. Hoshi nonchalantly catching the bat in mid-flight is a fantastic punchline for that bit and one of the best moments of the episode, but the lead up to it is flat, miscalculated, and dull. The same can be said for the scene between Archer and T'Pol on the treadmills, and the same can be said for the rest of the episode, really. The episode is also mind-numbingly repetitive. Archer asks about Porthos. Phlox has bad news. Archer complains about the Cretacens. T'Pol tells Archer to apologize to the Cretacens. Archer refuses. Archer asks about Porthos. Phlox has bad news. Archer complains about the Cretacens. T'Pol tells Archer to apologize to the Cretacens. Archer refuses. Just keep turning that wheel, Rick and Bran, and just keep turning that wheel until the hour is up. Archer tries to sleep. Phlox is noisy and wakes Archer up. Repeat. It's too bad Archer is living the episode. He'd have had way less trouble falling asleep if he was watching it. Despite all that, I don't find it to be nearly as awful as its many over-the-top detractors say it is. Some of the dialogue between Archer and Phlox is good. Not the half-assed, this is really about you wanting to fuck to Paul psychoanalysis, but when Archer is talking about Porthos or Phlox is talking about his vast polyamorous family back home, they feel like people connecting with each other in an emotionally trying time. In those moments, the episode works. Unfortunately, those moments only account for a small portion of the overall running time, leaving the rest of the episode to feel like a very, very long night. Those are my thoughts on A Night in Sick Bay. What do you think of this episode? Please share your thoughts with me in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel, and I sure wish you would, if you can afford it, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Steve Shives, becoming a channel member by clicking the join button or by making a one-time gift by clicking the thanks button or via PayPal or Venmo. Links are in the description. That wraps things up for this batch of reviews dedicated to the worst episodes ever. 
There are plenty more bad episodes of Star Trek shows, so I'm absolutely positive I will be revisiting this theme in the future. But for now, it's time to move on. Please join me next time as we begin a new batch of reviews. The theme of that batch is holodeck episodes. What better place to begin than with the first holodeck episode in the Star Trek franchise? And this episode was produced a lot earlier than most fans think. So early, in fact, that they weren't even calling it the holodeck yet. I'm talking about an episode of Star Trek, the animated series, titled The Practical Joker. See you then. Thanks for watching, and take care, everybody.